The demand to produce the greatest yield for the lowest dollar is a story old as farming itself. Before commercial fertilizers took over the fertilizing market in the 1930s, manure was the greatest source of nutrients for soil and crops. Bat droppings, cow, swine, even migrating bird excrement all contain varying concentrations of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, the three major crop nutrients that support plant growth. These nutrients are so important to farming because as crops grow, they eat up the nutrients in the soil. Every time we harvest plants, whether it's from a garden or from a field, we're taking nutrients away from that system. So when we harvest the plant, we harvest those nutrients. And then we need to put those back into the soil for the next crop. So we can do that with inorganic fertilizer, or we can do that with an organic fertilizer like manure or compost. The plants don't know the difference between types of fertilizer as long as they're in an available form. But the soil definitely knows the difference. And so when we use an organic fertilizer, we feed the soil. Without the ability to regain those vital nutrients, soil is left starving and becomes unable to produce abundant yields. Commercial fertilizers put nutrients back into the soil, but only on a temporary basis. They establish no longer term ecosystem for soil health and nutrient runoff into waterways increases with the use of commercial fertilizers. Farmers have begun looking for alternative sources of nutrients for sustainable agriculture, and nature's age-old fertilizer, manure, has been swept back into the spotlight. Walter Trout has been in the crop farming business for 25 years, and eight years ago, he made the switch from commercial fertilizers to manure. The hog operation was a great way to take four of the acres that we currently uh, farmed and convert that to a hog facility. And we didn't mess with anybody else's operation. We just made our operation a lot stronger. Commercial fertilizer, you either buy uh, nitrogen or you're buying phosphorus. The great thing about the hog manure is you're getting nitrogen, you're getting phosphorus, you're getting potassium, you're getting iron, magnesium, calcium. You're getting all these micronutrients. So you're getting a, a full fertilizing product and it's worked out very well for us. Many farmers employ the practice of crop rotation to encourage soil health. Walt alternates his crops from corn to soybean. This pairing takes advantage of the collection of nutrients in swine manure. Soybeans do not like the manure right the very first year, and it's probably because it's high in nitrogen. So the corn, where we plant the corn after we apply manure, the corn will eat up the nitrogen to grow that crop for that year. Well, then the following year we plant soybeans and the corn didn't use all the phosphorus. So the soybeans will end up taking the phosphorus. So we kind of get a one-two punch use up the majority of the manure that we have applied on two crops and then we come back and apply again. We've seen a great uh, response in both crops. We've seen a, uh, an advantage on the corn side of about 20 bushels to 25 bushels pretty consistently. And then on the soybeans, usually that five to 10 bushels an acre and I think a lot has to do with the soil health, the water holding capacity of, of the soil. Manure differs from commercial fertilizers in its ability to foster long-term soil health. One of the ways it does this is by adding organic matter to feed soil organisms that consume organic matter. These thriving organisms help bind soil particles together and create pores to hold moisture in the soil. When soil's ability to hold water increases, Water runoff and soil erosion decrease, preventing precious nutrients from being washed away and contributing to polluted waterways. I think it does a very good job, mainly probably on the water filtration, the soil health. Um, the landlord that sold us the four acres to build the hog facility, he goes, is this gonna hurt or help us? And I told him it would help his soil health and the water holding capacity, and it is proven to be correct. The other thing is with commercial fertilizer, you either buy nitrogen, you buy phosphorus, you buy potash. With hog manure, you're getting everything 
and it's kind of a full package deal to where we're doing one application and growing two crops and doing very well with that. Manure's benefits do not stop at soil health. It has proven to be a potential pathway to sustainable agriculture. We're raising pigs that are producing manure, which then the manure ra helps raise corn and soybeans. And then it and those corn and soybeans help feed the pigs. And so we're completely full circle. And that's another great thing about adding the pigs to our operation is that manure has now just made us very sustainable. So with the sustainability report, we're looking at the amount of acres that we farm, the amount of uh, manure that we apply, what chemicals we're using, what water consumption, what electricity consumption. And so it looks at our whole farming operation as one pie, and we're basically kind of checking all the boxes all the way around it. I believe everybody wants to be carbon free by 2050. We've been carbon free since 2016, and that's how far ahead we are. And I'm not bragging about that because we started with a theory, but now we have sustainability reports that actually show we are carbon negative. It's really, really neat um, what the ag community is doing and, and the incorporation of livestock. Increased soil health, vastly reduced carbon emissions, both valuable benefits of manure. But manure is a product linked hand in hand with the commodity of crop yields. No matter how sustainable manure proves for the environment, does it provide sustainable livelihoods for farmers? What are the economic concerns to making the switch from commercial fertilizers to manure? At the end of the day, it's all about yield and the number of bushels that we can sell. The cost effectiveness, to me basically it comes down to how much money did I spend on the commercial fertilizer. Before we had hogs and we were just a row crop operation and then versus once we brought the pigs in, once we brought the pigs in, we cut our commercial fertilizer bill by about 70%. And actually it's probably even higher than that because we're applying manure one time and getting two crops out of it. We're not having to buy commercial fertilizer for corn and then the next year buy commercial fertilizer for soybeans as well and keeping that soil health where we want it. So the manure has been a really a great additive on the economic side of it just by having the hogs and being a contract grower, we're receiving rent and bonuses off of growing the pigs. So those are dollars that were not coming into the operation prior to the pigs, and that's really helped out tremendously as well. My one landlord said, he goes, well, you're getting manure, or you're getting fertilizer for free. Not necessarily getting it for free. I still have to go work the pigs to produce it. To me, it's the purest form of sweat equity <laughs> because we have to go do chores to produce the manure, but then we're also seeing yield increases in corn, seeing yield increases in soybeans. With such advantages, it begs the question, why aren't more farmers making the switch from commercial fertilizer to manure? Manure comes with its challenges. The application of manure to a crop field requires more than three times as many days dedicated to application than commercial fertilizers. Typically, when we would apply a commercial fertilizer, you know, we were doing somewhere around 30 to 40 acres, and then you'd have to go refill. Now we bring over 62, 6,300 gallons of manure at, with a semi. We unload it onto the honey wagon, and it's down and back, and we're doing 1.75 acres. So it's the way that we apply it is is very uh, time consuming. The great thing is we have time right now uh, because we don't have to spend a lot of times at the pigs right now at this juncture of the stage of growth that they're in. And we've kind of timed that for the fall and the spring of, uh, is trying to get that age to where they don't need a lot of attention. Another challenge of manure application 
is its subjectivity to the tides of nature. You don't know when it's going to be really wet. Last year, for example, the first week of March was beautiful. We didn't apply any manure because we were like, okay, we got plenty of time. The rest of the month was just completely wet. We didn't start applying manure until about the 10th of April. So then that pushes that timeline all, and pushes our plant date a little bit later too. Manure application causes odor. With multiple factors such as high winds increasing its range and wet weather increasing its potency. Odor is the number one concern in any community that has a new hog facility that comes up. With the hog facility being there, people have realized or learned that Clay Center has a, a lagoon. A lot of farmers grow cover crop, be it radishes and turnips, and those all have odor to them. It's not necessarily our hog facility, it's other factors that are playing in it. So once people have kind of realized that it's not just the hog facility, in fact, a lot of people, we have people ride their bicycles and jog out in front of our hog facility. The way that we apply it also, we're incorporating it in the ground. We're not pumping it through a pivot or just top spreading the soil. We're actually putting the manure right where we want it, covering it with dirt. And once we do that, after we apply to a field, oh, anywhere from one to three days or so, then the odor is really pretty much gone. Manure's odor problem can leave farmers hesitant to make the switch to manure when it could lead to their communities turning hostile. But Walt succeeded in maintaining positive relationships in his community. The biggest way is letting them see what we're doing. So when we first uh, built the hog facility, we had an open house and invited everybody to come in and see it. The, the number one way is, is you just let people know exactly what you're doing. And by having the open house and letting people walk through our facility and explain how everything works, you take that fear away because they actually get to see and, and see how automated things are and that there is an exact plan on how these pigs come in, how they go out, how they're um, treated and fed. Um, while they're with us, and then how we handle the manure as well. So the biggest thing is just communication and talking to people. Despite these challenges, the benefits outweigh the cost, and Walt has no plans to return to commercial fertilizers. And after eight years as a manure producer, he has some advice for his fellow farmers. I wouldn't be afraid of it. I think it's a great product. There's the worst part of manure probably is the odor, but we have other products out there that can actually kill you. This stuff won't, it'll annoy you, but it should not harm you. But just don't be afraid of it. If you're looking at it, um, just communicate with your neighbors of what's going on. The barns are a lot different than they were, say 40 years ago, when we were all growing up with their with pigs out in feedlots in a lagoon. So the communities, I think, are really benefiting from hog facilities coming on because um, like for our operation, we added dollars to the tax roll that were, n that were not there um, by building the hog facility. So it's a, it's a really good thing. Be patient is, is kind of the number one deal. Um, but that, I guess that would be my advice.